My name is Warby and I'm a Director of Product Management at Exabeam. Today I'm going to show you a walkthrough of the health and consumption application for our new scale sim. So I'm going to launch the application. I can either do it here with this icon or I can click on the application tile. And I'll first get a view of the service health page. Across the top, this is an example of what it would look like when there's a known issue. So in this demo environment, we're showing an issue and this lets the user know there's something that's happening. Exabeam is aware of it, they're working on it. And we can click on this global status to see specifically what are the details, uh, when can we expect an update, what's the impact, what, when do we expect resolution, etc. If there aren't any issues, then that banner would not show up. Down here we can see three major categories of health. So there's one around collection, which means getting the data in. So primarily site collectors and cloud collectors. There's one around processing, which is things like ingestion and parsing. And there's one for applications. For any of these, we can see the history. We can change the time frame that we're looking at. And if we want to know more, we can click on the health details. So these uh, historic issues are because, again, this is demo environment and we inject traffic artificially. But if this was a real issue, I could click on collection health details and get a little bit more granular on what the issues are, what was impacted. So in this case, we had a, a simulated issue for the cloud collector about a month ago. And then we can see there was some uh, activity around the site collector. Currently, there are no site collectors configured. There is one cloud collector. If there were any cloud collectors that were stopped or had an error, they would show up on this chart. And I could also click on this link and go directly to the cloud collector configuration page. So for example, there might be an error because of failed authentication. So I could go to this page uh, resolve the issue myself and get that collector back collecting again. This is a nice flow where the user doesn't have to go back to the main page and then drill back down into the collector. It takes them straight to where they need to go. So we have that similar drill down view for the processing. So in this case we have parsing, event, building, and analytics of the data that has come in. And then the last category is around the applications. So things like the management services for collection, next-gen search, etc. So all of this is, again, around service health. So it's an easy way to see what is the current health, what has happened historically, do I own the problem, or is this something Exabeam already owns and they're working on? I can just come here to see updates. The next area that I'll talk about is around licensing. This is meant to be the, the place that you would go to understand what you've purchased and how much you've consumed against that. So here at the top we can see, uh, on the top left, this is an Exabeam Fusion license. Um, in this example, there's a 300 gig average ingestion limit of volume for SIM and the same for security investigation. Sometimes those can be different. You might see SIM be higher. And if this was a, a SIM or an SLM license, you would see a different view showing just those uh, details. In this example, there was a five seat incident responder add-on. We can see the retention for security investigation. So we retained for up to 45 days for events, 365 days for sessions and 14 days for logs. On the SIM side, we retain for one month of logs. If you purchase long-term search, then you would see another box over here that shows how much was purchased and how much is currently being consumed against that license, similar to the other items here on the top row. Down below, because it's a Fusion license, we have charts for each of these because they can be different. And so we can hover over this and see for the time frame what was the total volume for that day? We could zoom out and go further back and see, in this case, going back several months to when this environment was stood up. And now we're looking at the average for the month. So it's the average gigabytes consumed per day for the month of April and March and so forth. We can also change it to EPS or total events. 
This can be useful for just understanding what your data sources are sending and how they're reflected here in our tool. For new scale SIM, all the licenses are sold based on gigabytes per day. Now, if I wanted to understand maybe this volume is lower or higher than I expected, I want to understand why exactly. I come over here to SIM consumption details or SI details. I click on that link and I get a lot more information about what goes into that total. So here in the overview on the top left, we have the total data ingestion. So for the filter that's chosen, in this case 30 days above, we're averaging 22 gigabytes consumed per day. And we can see how much is parsed versus unparsed. So mostly parsed, a very small amount unparsed. That's what you would expect to see. If that unparsed amount was larger than you expected, you'd probably want to go troubleshoot that and you would use Logstream. And so we provide a link here similar to the health details page for collectors, guide the user quickly to what might be the next step rather than have them go to the main page and drill down again. In the center, we can see the most active collectors. So these are the collection points where the traffic is coming from and the most active vendors. You can see Microsoft, Beyond Trust, Checkpoint, etc. at the top of the list. What's nice to see is down here in the Sankey chart, we can see the flows of all the collectors on the left, the parsed and unparsed data, and then what those vendors, for what we're able to parse, what those vendors and products are. And you could click on one, like I'll click on Microsoft here, and now it's gonna to filter to just the Microsoft applications. So I can see that they're coming from two collectors on the left, it's being parsed, that's how I know it's Microsoft, and I have these six different products unique to Microsoft. So it's a way to quickly see kind of a breakdown and a subset of information. I can reset that. I can scroll down here to a table which has the same data in, in a table format that I can actually export. What's nice here is I can do some pretty interesting filtering. So as I said in the beginning, I see a lot of traffic from these top four vendors, but I might be interested in more details beyond those. Maybe these are all expected, but I want to know more about what's what's coming in of the lower volume variety. So I can come down here and I'll go to vendor. I'm going to select all and I'm going to uncheck the popular ones, which were Amazon, Beyond Trust, Checkpoint, and Microsoft. I'm going to apply that. And both the Sankey chart and the table will update to show what's remaining. So here's where you might have missed things in that upper level view where it's showing all the high volume items first, but now I can see a lot more details including down to these very small collection points. So this is handy for troubleshooting. And if I wanted to export this filtered view, I just click export. It's going to create a CSV. It's going to be that subset of information. If I reset the filters so there's none applied and I hit export, I'll get all the information. And I can open this up in my favorite spreadsheet application, do my own charts, uh, additional filtering, etc. So that's the main things that I wanted to cover, just to show, again, the health of the overall service. How do you know everything's healthy? If it's not, where, where should you go next? And also, how are you consuming against your license? And if that total volume is something different than you expect, you can specifically see why is it higher or why is it lower than I thought? What, are the actual, what is the actual breakdown of the products and vendors in that application? So thank you very much for watching this walkthrough of the health and consumption dashboard application. I hope you found it helpful and be sure to check out the additional suggested resources and keep on learning. Thank you so much.